All right. It is 4 o'clock on Monday. We're going to have two COVID updates this week. Today, which will be exclusively on COVID and the Delta variant. And then we will use a good portion of our Team Kentucky update on Thursday as well. We are back into a period of time where a whole lot of different things are moving in the public sector. At the federal level, things we are learning about the Delta variant, certainly skyrocketing numbers. Uh, but cutting to the chase, the Delta variant is spreading like wildfire. We heard that before. We heard that in previous variants, and this one is spreading faster than anything we have seen. If you are unvaccinated, you are at significant risk, significant risk. Please go get vaccinated. How many stories do we need to see? Because they're played out every day on all different forms of news of people about to be intubated saying, can I have the vaccine? And that health care worker saying it's too late. In some instances, you can understand. We have frustrated health care workers that would say, I told you to get it months ago because it's in a community of someone that they know. If you're unvaccinated, you got lots of people out there that love you. They want you to be around. Please go do it. Please don't be a vehicle this can spread. We want to get back to normal. And if you have not gotten vaccinated, you are preventing us from getting back to normal. To those that have been vaccinated, try not to get frustrated because that's not going to help. And please don't get frustrated with those that we still need to get a shot in their arm. That's not going to help. It is understandable. But this pandemic has required so much out of us. And it's going to require more patience, even with the urgency that we need to act and continue to act. So each one of these major escalations that we have seen, typically the precursor for Kentucky has been states to our south. They get hit really hard, and we get hit shortly after that. So we saw states like Florida and Texas uh, get hit last summer. Um, before we got it uh, as severely. Uh, they started uh, in this one, I remember a couple of weeks ago, with Florida being, what, 20% of all uh, new cases, and then we saw us ticking up as well. Well, the news is getting pretty dire. Start with the Florida news. They have broken their own record for COVID-19 hospitalizations. Right, at a time when we can all get vaccinated, and pretty much if you're vaccinated, you'll, um, you'll never almost never statistically end up in the hospital. We are setting hospital records in the states where this is hitting first. That means that any state can end up setting a hospital record, even though if you're Kentucky, half of people are going to be protected and not be there. So if you are unvaccinated, your likelihood of being in the hospital is so significantly higher than it has ever been. And then look at uh, Texas, if we'll show the, this is heartbreaking. So this is an Austin mayor touring not just an ICU that's full, but it's overwhelmed with young, unvaccinated patients. Never before in this pandemic have we seen something like that. So the rules, the Delta variant has rewritten, right? It used to be that if you were young, you're probably going to be okay. You weren't going to end up in the hospital. That is no longer the case. The Delta variant is coming for the unvaccinated, even the younger folks. So again, get vaccinated. Uh, one of our own uh, journalists who is um, here on a number of occasions had sent out um, an email to various editors um, of, of newspapers uh, this week, and, and I thought it was worth putting up because I thought it really encapsulated where we are right now and the help we need out of everybody. So um, this is Al Cross, and, and those of you that know me and know Al, we haven't always gotten along, but we are certainly um, on the same page in, in, in addressing COVID. And this, I thought, was really poignant. There is no more immediately pressing public interest in this country 
or in this state than persuading people to get vaccinated. That's 100% right. That's better than I've ever said it, but there is no more pressing public interest. We lose more people to this thing than we do to, to wars. We can lose more productivity in our economy to this than anything that we have ever seen. And that it takes everybody. It takes those in government, those in media, those in the medical community. But I thought this definitely put together uh, the urgency um, in a very poignant way. And what backs it up is the escalation that we continue to see. Let's put up our stair-stepper chart. As you can see, we have the most cases that we have had since February. February, most people did not have access to this vaccine. So we have the most cases now in Kentucky since before the vaccine was readily available. What that means is it's completely avoidable and we can completely stop it simply by getting vaccinated. Vaccines plus some temporary masking equal winning. Refusing to do so is going to continue this dramatic escalation. Let's put up the cases by week. Remember, every time those arrows get further towards exponential, every time that curve gets more worrisome going up, it means that we are doubling faster, we are tripling faster, that it gets out of control quicker and quicker. So those are the cases. Let's look at the positivity because it's actually a little more concerning. 38 straight days of increasing positivity rate. Today it's 9.77%. It was 1.79% in June. It's a date in June that it started escalating. It was 1.79%. It is now eight points higher. Let's look at the curve in that one. That's what exponential looks like, folks. That is the type of curve that leads to Philadelphia, not St. Louis. And I would hate for us to have done so well for so long to end up with the type of, of increase that we have fought so hard against. But the difference between now and when I stood up here in March and we talked about Philadelphia versus St. Louis and then Philadelphia versus St. Louis versus Louisville, we talked about crushing the curve. At that point, we didn't know exactly how we would do it. And we had to take really extreme measures. We don't have to do any of that anymore. All we have to do is get people vaccinated. A safe, effective vaccine, one that over half of Kentuckians have already taken. And you know what? They're fine. They're better than fine. They're feeling good. They're protected from the most dangerous thing that's hit us in our lifetime. You know, that means half of all the people that you interact with, if you're unvaccinated, have gotten the vaccine. And they're fine. And you will be too. You'll be better than fine. You'll be protected. Now, yes, this is absolutely alarming. But we do have some glimmers of hope. And that's that the number of individuals getting vaccinated on any given day is increasing in Kentucky, something we hadn't seen in a while. Uh, over the weekend and through today, 22,663 new Kentuckians vaccinated. And let me just give you an idea about the, the, the pace of what that means. So in four weeks last month, we had 81,000 and change Kentuckians get their first shot of hope. Last week, we had 40,791. So in one week, we had almost half of what we had all last month. That needs to continue because vaccines are effective against the most deadly form of COVID that we have ever seen that is impacting younger people that will fill up our hospitals and is entirely avoidable. So uh, let's go through ages, which we have done. We've tried to talk about um, both demographics of who is and is not vaccinated and geography. So 
And other good news, we're up one percentage point on 18 years and older, 63% of adults uh, now have at least one shot. The national news, I know, talks a whole lot about the rate of people with two shots. I want to get at least one in your arm because you will have some level of protection, and this is going to continue to be what we use. Uh, 65 and up held steady. 50 to 64, up a percent. 40 to 49, up a percent. If you get to 60, we'll put you in the green. That'll look really good up on this screen. And it'll mean more of your friends because most of our friends are in our age group. are going to live through this thing. 30 to 39, up a percent. Get to 50, we'll put you in yellow. 18 to 29, up a percent, still far, far too low. So if you're 18 to 29, I want you to take a look at that Austin slide again if you'll put it back up. This is you. Barely over a third of Kentuckians in this age group are vaccinated. And what we see in a state that things happen before they hit Kentucky over and over is this Delta variant is coming for you. It's pretty easy. Get vaccinated, wear a mask for a little while, and you'll be fine. Don't. This will be the sickest that you've ever been in your lifetime, according to former President Trump's FDA commissioner, and you could have avoided all of it. So let's look at geography. Um, let's start with Kentucky counties with 50% and up. So we have not added any counties to this, and we need to. We have 74 red counties today. That is concerning. But with a little good news, because we'll take any of it, let's look at Kentucky counties with over 40% of Kentuckians vaccinated. We have seen um, an one, two, three, four, five counties added to this list that hadn't reached the 40% mark yet. That's Pulaski, Warren, Logan's, Hopkins, and Caldwell. Good for you. Keep moving. 40% is nowhere near enough, but what it means is that your percentages are increasing. Good work. Keep going. For everybody on this one, it hasn't hit the 50 percent. It's time. Keep going. Dr. Stack breaks down vaccination status of our cases. Let's show that chart today. We update this. What it shows is that the vaccines are highly effective and your risk is significantly more if you are unvaccinated than vaccinated. 94 percent of all cases unvaccinated, 91% of all hospitalizations, 88.7% of all deaths. And when you look at the numbers nationally, we would expect to move closer to what we're seeing nationally, uh, that, that you are so safe comparatively if you get this vaccine. Let's also look at the rate of Kentucky COVID-19 cases and vaccinations March 1 through July 30th, which of course um, we show. Uh, look at that. What this shows in relative terms is that you have more protection at 5 to 1 in July, right now, coming into August, if you've been vaccinated compared to what we face than you did in March, which isn't quite 5 to 1. What that means is these are as effective, based on the adversary you're facing, more difficult one now, as they have ever been. Look at that. Again, you are very protected if you get the vaccine. We are asking you in a number of circumstances to wear a mask because you may be able to spread it. And if you can, given that we are you know, just over 50% of Kentuckians vaccinated, you're likely to spread it to someone unvaccinated that can be harmed. Okay, today we also have with us um, to provide uh, a couple updates about uh, some steps we'll be taking in our state-run health care facilities, Secretary Eric Friedlander. Now, he's going to talk about a couple different areas, um, one of which is our uh, veterans homes and centers that we run. I just want to point out what a good job that group has done getting people vaccinated. The veterans in those homes, and remember, 
We had really awful outbreak, especially in Thompson Hood. We lost a lot of people in Thompson Hood. It was tragic. Now 94.4% of all those veterans that we serve in those facilities are vaccinated. When we look at staff, um, Radcliffe, 81%, with a couple more just taking theirs. Thompson Hood, 71.8%, but 12 more just took their first dose. Eastern Kentucky Veterans Center, 71% of staff. Western Kentucky Veterans Center, 62%, and one more just took their first dose. Now that beats most private sector numbers, that beats most other state numbers, but these are health care facilities in the public that are dealing with the most vulnerable. So we are going to be taking a couple of steps. Secretary Friedlander. Thank you, Governor. First, I want to say this Delta variant is real. It is potent. We need to take precautions. We need to protect ourselves, our families, and others, just like we have done throughout this pandemic. Wear a mask, be socially distanced, and get vaccinated. So today I'm here to talk about our health care facilities that are run by the state. That includes the veterans nursing homes, as well as then those facilities run by the Cabinet for Health and Family Services, our uh, intermediate care facilities, our psychiatric hospitals. We are going to be asking them to take some additional steps. Now, these folks who have served in these facilities and the folks who have served in the congregate care facilities all across the Commonwealth, the first thing I want to say is thank you. You have done a valiant job of trying to protect yourself and take care of the folks that you are serving in all these facilities. So thank you. And that's where I want to begin. But we need to do more. We know that COVID has come and really, as the governor said, Thompson Hood, we've seen that it really attacks in facilities and congregate settings. We know that this is the case. We don't expect anything different. We've had a positive case today in one of our facilities among a staff member who was unvaccinated. So we're going to talk about what we can do to protect not only the folks who work in these facilities, but also all of the residents. So first, no matter where these facilities are located, we are going to require that we wear masks. We have to wear masks. It's the, it's the minimal thing that we can do. So we're asking in all of our state-owned health care facilities that people continue and will always mask universally. The other thing that we're going to do, and this is for all of our facilities in the state, to try to lead by example. We're going to ask that everyone test at least twice a week to make sure that we are protecting both other staff and residents, to make sure that we are not bringing in more of the COVID variant than we should. So those folks will need to be tested at least twice a week. Now, I'm going to make a little difference. If you're vaccinated, which is really what we want you to be, we are going to only test when it's mandated by the CDC guidelines, much, much less frequent. We want to encourage all of our facility staff to get vaccinated, uh, particularly Cabinet for Health and Family Services facilities we are not to the same level as the veterans nursing homes. We need to lead. So I'm asking all cabinet employees, uh, I guess you would call it Team CHF, a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Team Kentucky, uh, to take the lead, to make sure that we're protecting ourselves, our families, and those residents that we are serving, and get vaccinated. Wear a mask, be socially distanced, wash your hands, None of those things have gone away. We've just started to get a little slack in how we do that, and we need to pick that back up to make sure we bend that curve. Thank you. So on Team Kentucky, our goal is to continue leading by example, that is masking. In all our state buildings, we have had positives in this building since we started masking. So I would hope 
that everybody gets why we're doing it, especially because your government shouldn't spread the Delta variant to you when you visit a government building. And just like workforces I'm seeing, like Ford, uh, like Firestone, where I was today, um, they're masking when they hit red. Why? Because it preserves their workforce, because they need people to be healthy to show up the next day and not be in quarantine. So as the governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, in many ways, I'm, I'm the, the CEO of a $12 billion, 20 plus thousand employee operation. And we do things like bridge inspections that are so critical. We do things where we help people one on one when they come in. Uh, without our help, you can't get a driver's license uh, or renew one now that those are, are being moved to, to regional centers. So many things, and I'm committed not to shutting down any of them, to keep every single one of them open. And if we are committed to making sure that happens, I mean, to make sure an economy on fire continues to be on fire, it's about getting vaccinated, and until enough people are vaccinated in the right circumstances, putting on that mask. And certainly, for public-facing health care operations, we've got to do more. Now, the CDC's information they released last Friday, which is scary, um, also talked about breakthrough cases in congregate settings. So we've got to up our game there. We've got to make sure that since we know the Delta variant is aggressive, that we don't let it back and uh, uh, our health care settings. And this has taken steps to make sure uh, that we can do so. I know uh, that there's a number of other things that are going on. Again, uh, a lot of balls in the air, and I think we can expect on the federal side and on the private sector side, a number of changes moving forward. We're already seeing a number of them occur. But what this takes is, is, is leadership at all levels. It can't just be one person telling us all what we need to do uh, because we got some people whose heels dig in a little bit more when it's one person as opposed to folks in their communities. So whether you are a business owner, whether you are a local official, uh, whether you are um, a school official, we need you to have the courage to do the right thing and protect our people. I will say today was Will and Lila's first day of school. They were excited to go. And they didn't mind putting on that mask at all if it meant they were going to get the maximum number of days in school. And Lila was just happy, since she's not old enough to be vaccinated, that Will had to wear one too. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Um, we have moved to a half in-person, half virtual model uh, with, with the rise of this Delta variant. So I'm gonna try to go back and forth and take a live question here. And then James, if we have the ability to go back and forth, Where's Kenneth? Um, so let's start with uh, with Karen Czar. Governor, we're about four weeks out from the 4th of July weekend. How much of a role do you think that has played in the escalation of cases? And what does that mean moving forward, future events, future holidays right around the corner? And are you looking at potentially rolling back capacity limits again? At this time, I'm not looking at rolling back capacity limits because as long as you put on a mask in a red county, you're fine with more people. If everybody get vaccinated in the county, we wouldn't even need that. But with the combination, we should be okay. These are two weapons we have never had together uh, to fight uh, the, the variant. Now, I do think, though, moving forward, big events with lots of unvaccinated people isn't very smart in the course of the Delta variant which is why I also don't think entire classrooms of kids that are unvaccinated is very smart, so they need to wear a mask. It's the same thing. The same spread you would see at a party with 30 unvaccinated people can happen uh, in that classroom and, and, and elsewhere. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking uh, about that as we move forward, uh, but we also know a couple of other things. Move something outside, spread out a little bit more, cut down on the people. Uh, everyone now has seen enough information where they know what the right decision is and they know how to mitigate it. The question is, are they willing to? You know, I, I saw at least one quote of somebody saying, well, yeah, I get all this is going on, but I'm not gonna put, to get, put, put any measures forth unless, unless the governor makes me. 
That's pretty much like saying, I wouldn't rob the bank if you'd have stopped me. You know, everybody has their responsibility in looking out for everybody else. Let's go to Melissa Patrick with Kentucky Health News. Oh, hi, Governor. Um, are, how concerned are you right now about the um, increase in hospitalizations and ICU and ventilator use that's going on in Kentucky? So right now, I am not concerned about capacity itself. I, I'm not concerned about being overrun as we uh, stand here. And, and part of that is because what I've seen from our hospital systems all the way through COVID. Uh, they don't have to be told. They do the responsible thing to make sure that they have room and, and when they need to cut back on certain other procedures, they do. What I am concerned is about how sick people are when they're coming into the hospital right now. You know, I think what the healthcare professionals would say is, sure, we had hospitalizations before, but now when they come in, the, the patients need a lot more care. And I think what they would say is it, it also depends on whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated. Uh, again, I, I, somebody that's working a shift here in this county said that they had 11 people come in, three were vaccinated, they gave them a little oxygen, they went home later. All eight that were unvaccinated had to be fully admitted to the hospital, and again, we're not in good shape. Tom Latek. Thank you, Governor. Um, the federal eviction moratorium ended Saturday. Uh, I guess because of that it has here as well, but is there still the money available in the uh, both the renters yeah. and homeowners programs for people that, that need help? So the question is on the uh, federal eviction moratorium uh, ending. Uh, there is no reason that anybody in Kentucky needs to be evicted right now because we have a hundred plus million dollars out there to pay their back rent and to pay rent going forward. Let's make sure we use every single one of those dollars, right? There's no reason to be cruel. And I'm a little concerned that some out there won't take it because they only want to accept cash. And I worry about businesses that only accept cash and what the reasons would be. Um, I don't think it's right to, to kick somebody out right now because the housing market is hot and maybe you could do something different with the property. So to our, to, to our landlords, please accept these dollars more dollars than you are going to get in any eviction proceeding and it's the right thing to do but plenty out there tom for anybody who needs it make sure um, you you go to our website uh, and you file for those dollars we are continuing to improve we provided over three million dollars of help last week that was the most of any single week and we're getting better and better uh corinne boyer w-e-k-u Hi, Governor. Um, will you consider or are you considering requiring vaccination for state workers? And is the state or does the state have the capacity to track breakthrough cases among vaccinated people? Uh, we, we do have the capability of uh, determining the number of our positive cases on any given period of time uh, that are vaccinated individuals, which uh, tell you the, uh, the, the numbers as compared to the unvaccinated. Uh, I'm not uh, currently considering any vaccine mandate for state employees. So what we have done today is if you are unvaccinated, you are more likely to contract and spread uh, this virus to the public, to those that you work with. Uh, so in certainly our, our front facing healthcare settings, we are increasing uh, the frequency of testing for the unvaccinated. And that's pretty easy on why. You're more likely to have it, thus we need to test for it more often. You're more likely to get it the next day, which means we need to test more often. Uh, Chad, Hedrick. Um, Carter County Schools just announced that they are pushing back the start of school, saying because there is a large number of school-aged children with COVID right now. About a week and a half ago, they did say on their Facebook that they weren't going to mandate masks. Just getting your reaction to that message wow. to schools. So uh, according to, to Chad, Carter County School System yeah. is pushing back the start of school because so many kids have COVID. 
And right now, they won't require masks. I, if I'm a parent, what am I going to do? I mean, my goodness. I, I, I really hope smarter heads prevail. You, for everybody else, I can tell you the Delta variant is going to spread. But in this instance, you know kids already have it. Our, our recommendation is as clear as it can be. School systems should mandate universal masking, should require it. That's what the CDC, the federal level, says. That's what we at the state level say. That's what every local health department director would say. So every public health official is telling every Kentucky school system that they need universal masking. And the school systems are saying no, some of them. That means that they are doing it in the complete absence, no, no, in contradiction of all public health advice. Uh, Piper Hudspeth Blackburn, AP. Um, thanks, Governor. Um, are you considering um, using um, uh, coronavirus relief funds to offer financial incentives to those to get vaccines? Um, Biden encouraged a state and local governments to do this last week, um, and like $100 to get a vaccine. So we're, lo we're looking at the president's recommendation. Uh, we certainly tried a number of different types of incentives. And in fact, $100, $100 is being offered by many of our managed care organizations to their members that are Kentuckians. And we're not seeing a great return on that. What I want to make sure is any incentive program that we do, uh, we have seen works in other places because those, especially the the, the CARES Act money that we have to do things like this is limited. Uh, and my concern would be spending or committing too much of it when that next good idea is hopefully right around the, the corner. But we will, we will consider any idea that is working uh, to implement as best we can. We do believe that the shot at a million is working. It, it stabilized our numbers at a time when we were rapidly declining. Uh, but I don't think that there is any question that getting real factual information about the dangers of the Delta variant is the number one thing that can and will incentivize or motivate people to get vaccinated. And, and that's why we need the help of the media. But you know what? Today, I'm asking for more than that. You know, we are at war. Every single Kentucky and every single American, every member of planet Earth is at war with a virus that wants to kill as many of us as possible. And I know here in Kentucky, just about everybody that will listen to, to, to me has gotten vaccinated. Just about anybody that will listen to uh, their, their local health systems has gotten vaccinated. So now we need to individualize this. I need every single Kentuckian who's gotten vaccinated and know that you're just fine and protected to talk to somebody who hasn't. Because your friends, your loved ones are more at risk than they have ever been and we need your help you know they need your help it may be a really uncomfortable conversation it may be going places that you're not supposed to right when you sit down for dinner like politics or, or religion you pick but their life and their health and us defeating this virus is on the line so if you haven't had that tough conversation yet and I, I get why you might not have I really need you to now because you might be the only person that they trust and that they'll listen to. And you might be the only person that can break through and, and, and get them that protection. You know, in, in many parts of our society, when, when we see something that, that looks wrong or is going wrong, we have a duty to, to, to act. I, mean, I, I believe this is one of, of patriotism in a time of war. So I'd ask you, just talk to that individual. And try not to be frustrated. It's easy to be frustrated where we are right now, but that's not going to help. And try to be patient. And it's really hard to be patient right now, and we shouldn't have to be dealing with the Delta variant at all. I mean, in this adversary that's going to cause death and pain and suffering, the solution is at your pharmacy, at your grocery store, at your hospitals, at your local health departments at your community health centers, 
at, at your fairs where there's a booth set up. It's right there. So please, Kentucky, have that tough conversation. Uh, you might be the one that's able to push us finally past this. It's your goodness that's kept so many people here. And we need both your goodness plus your courage to have that tough conversation to get to the next level. Uh, Mike Valenti, welcome back. So to piggyback off of Chad's question, uh, many health experts have been clear that we can't mask up our way out of this. Uh, I know there are legitimate uh, medical and religious exemptions, but students in Kentucky do have to present an immunization certificate showing they've been inoculated against highly transmissible diseases. So I'm wondering what makes COVID different and why that can't be added to the certificate. And at what point do you start considering vaccination mandates for school? Uh, again, at this time, um, we're not considering any vaccination mandate. And I, I just, you know, do you think one would work? Remember, when people have dug their heels in already in the face of all the information, we've got to think about effectiveness. And that's in anything that we put in or we don't, right? Because what makes something effective? It's the, the, the step that you're taking times the number of people that will follow it. And so we've got to understand where we are and ultimately try to find the best way. Sometimes that's examples. Sometimes that's a, uh, a step to, uh, to, to, to ultimately move uh, forward. I, I mean, you look, there, there are still people um, holding out, even with what the NFL is doing. Uh, where you can lose paychecks, you can uh, forfeit games. There are players with $20 million contracts that are holding out at least uh, for the moment. But, but let me comment on, on that organization because I think they've figured out what private employers are going to see if this Delta variant continues. To them, COVID isn't red or blue, it's green. It's lost profitability. It's lost productivity. And that's going to be the same for every private sector business, too. And that's whether folks aren't, aren't doing the right things, getting vaccinated, masking where they should, and somebody's been in contact and gets quarantined, or it's going to be if we have outbreaks at school because if, if kids got to be behind the computer for a week because of it, guess what? There's going to need to be a parent at home, and you're going to miss that shift. And that could be debilitating for some small counties, small towns, uh, for those workforces. So and we look at each situation and the, and the changing circumstances, but, but we look for what is most effective and a vaccine mandate from the state uh, right now, I do not believe would be effective. Uh, Sarah Ladd, Courier Journal. Yes, thank you. So the Washington Post reported a few days ago that several states are seeing a spike in vaccination rates. I know you talked a little bit about the increase we've seen in Kentucky over the weekend. Just wondering, would you classify the increase as a spike? And was it concentrated anywhere or was it more widespread throughout the state? Thanks. Uh, I wouldn't. So what we have seen is a significant increase. But it's it's what you compare it to that I guess would, would determine whether it's a spike. Right now, I think we're, we're looking at 1.7 to two times uh, more vaccinations. Um, over a period of time. It looks like just about every day or the week. Certainly in this last week, we did half of what we did all last month. Uh, I hope we are seeing a spike. I think before I call it a spike, I'd like to see a lot more. Um, but we are headed in the right direction in terms of our vaccine numbers for, for the first time in several months. Uh, so we want to continue uh, to see that. And again, the more information that we can get out there about the Delta variant and the more conversations individual Kentuckians are willing to have with friends and neighbors and loved ones that aren't vaccinated, uh, the better. You know, I got to have a conversation with, with somebody the other day that had just gotten uh, vaccinated because they'd had COVID, but they'd learned that the reinfection rate is so much higher with the Delta variant. And they said, okay, now I know I need to get it. But we had a conversation about their kids. And I talked to him about my kids and, and taking Will in to get vaccinated immediately. And then what it would mean if someone in uh, my son's school um, was positive 
but he was vaccinated, what that would mean about quarantine or not quarantine. So these are some of the discussions that I think are, are helpful. Um, Isaiah Kim Martinez. Where are you? There you are. I appreciate your time. Just wanted to ask this. I know this was addressed a couple weeks ago as well with regards to the mask mandate. We understand when it was rolled back, we were in a different time. Is there any consideration that that could be put back in at any point? Uh, we are not taking um, the potential for a mask mandate off the table, but the circumstances are very different. Uh, that is, vaccines offer a huge amount of protection. So uh, if we looked at that, and we are not right now, I want to be clear, we would be looking about um, transmission uh, from vaccinated individuals. Uh, we also have to look at hospitalizations, right? If our hospitals start filling to the brim, then we have to look at, at steps to make sure that there is room. Because could you imagine if people's failure to get vaccinated filled up every single hospital bed and then somebody had a heart attack and couldn't get helped? Somebody had a stroke and couldn't get helped? Somebody had another medical emergency that had nothing to do with COVID and that person, let's say, had been vaccinated and was protected. They can't get the help they need and they die. You know, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we don't reach any point like that. But again, if we just get vaccinated, we can even tear off the masks and go back to our regular, um, our regular lives. But trying to set the, the right example in areas of high transmission, wearing a mask for, for a period of time can, can really help us. Uh, Mike Pickett. Do we have Mike on? Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, you mentioned earlier. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the, uh, the the breakdown of the of those who are vaccinated by age, for example, and uh, which counties are at above forty or fifty percent. What else are you able to tell us in regards to like who the unvaccinated still are, whether it be by the like age or another demographic, or even the, the reasons? Like, what are people who are involved in the vaccination process telling folks like yourself at the state level about the reasons as to why they're People are still not getting vaccinated. Well, what we know is that unvaccinated Kentuckians skew younger, um, and and it's in most counties. the The highest rates of vaccination are in central and in northern Kentucky, um, followed by by Jefferson County, um, and and some of those surrounding counties. We have some pockets. Uh, like Lyon County that's higher than its surrounding, though not as high as, as some of the others. Um, this misinformation is real and it kills people. And we have people out there that really believe because there's been so many posts on Facebook or they saw something on cable news that, that this vaccine can make them sterile. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Uh, they advise it for pregnant women right now it does not make you sterile um, people worry about magnets in it um, i had a conversation with someone who, who truly believed it and and that means the information that they got was bad or that it's some form of control or that it's being pushed by um, bad people again it's misinformation and it kills people but bad examples do too not being clear that we need to get more people vaccinated. Not talking about it as uh, a choice, but talking about it as the smart thing to do. Talking about it, if it's a choice, as the one between health and not health, life versus death, beating COVID, or continuing uh, to, to, to go through this. Um, not um, lessening the seriousness of being in a red county, pushing back against uh, guidance that we know works. So folks, we, we've got to stop with the silliness. Again, COVID doesn't care about red or blue, Democrat or Republican, urban or rural, doesn't care about your age. It just wants to kill as many of us as possible. That's what the virus wants to do. So how about we push all that silliness aside? We make sure that we protect one another 
I mean, it's as simple as, as living out our faith, loving our neighbor, being our brother and sister's keeper, and having the courage, having the courage uh, to step up and to do the, the right thing. Uh, so, folks, we are in a serious situation. I want to say if you're vaccinated, thanks. No, very much thank you for doing the right thing. Yes, for a brief period of time, I need you to wear a mask in certain places. That's because it appears that a small portion of vaccinated people can still spread the virus, and I know you don't want to spread the virus to someone whose body can't handle it. It's temporary. It is absolutely temporary. We removed it before. We'll remove the guidance again. We just need to get to a better place. And when you look at the escalating cases, you know we're not in a good place. Again, if you were unvaccinated, this is the most danger you have ever been in since the start of COVID. And there are more people out and about than ever before. So not only is it deadlier, you have more exposure, and it spreads more aggressively. So once again, what the health experts are saying is if you don't get vaccinated, you will get the variant and it will be the sickest that you will ever be in your life. So go to your drugstore, go to your grocery store, you can get call multiple numbers. We will find a vaccine for you. It's time. You may not like it, you don't have to tell anybody, right? Just go get vaccinated and get your family vaccinated. We can beat this. We are gonna get through this. We're gonna get through it together. I hope this is our last chapter and we can almost guarantee that it is again if we all get vaccinated uh, we will have another update on thursday i know we're seeing some moves by private employers um, and and i support uh, those moves that i am seeing uh, let's keep working let's keep pushing let's finish this we've done so well let's finish strong thank you oh wait let's close james with a video that i meant to show you know if you don't want to listen to me Listen to someone a whole lot smarter, which is 17-year-old Addison.